The Alzheimer's Association reports 5.4 million Americans have Alzheimer's disease and the risk just increases as people grow older. Today we learn what steps we can take to save our brain and lower our Alzheimer's risk. His short-term memory is totally gone. Every 68 seconds, someone in the United States develops Alzheimer's. But switching up your routine may help avoid this debilitating disease. Doing activities that are out of the norm, like brushing your hair with the opposite hand, activates regions of the brain that are not usually stimulated, lowering the risk of memory impairment and Alzheimer's. Also, start doing push-ups daily. Seven push-ups or more a day can stimulate blood flow to the brain and help generate new brain cells. And take a break and relax. High levels of the stress hormone cortisol can damage the hippocampus, the region of the brain responsible for memory. Relaxation techniques like deep breathing can increase the size of the hippocampus in as little as eight weeks. Here's to keeping your brain healthy. Diet can also play a big role in a person's Alzheimer's risk. Studies show apples stimulate production of a neurotransmitter that does the same thing as a common Alzheimer's drug. Coffee also protects the brain by blocking the buildup of Alzheimer's brain toxins. In fact, Alzheimer's researchers say drinking three to five cups of coffee a day may cut the risk of developing the disease by 65% all easy steps we can work into our everyday life to possibly so, slow, maybe even prevent Alzheimer's disease. But there's still a lot that isn't known about the disease. Right now, leading experts and researchers from around the world are in Boston for the Alzheimer's Association International Conference 2013. Some of the exciting research being presented in Boston includes a study of veterans that connects a lower risk for the disease for those who have had cancer. Older age at retirement appears to be associated with reduced Alzheimer's risk. Socioeconomic status may increase risk for Alzheimer's disease in older African Americans compared to older whites in the U.S. Some online tests for Alzheimer's disease fail on scientific validity and ethical concerns. Also at the conference, the Alzheimer's Association and the CDC have unveiled 30 action steps for public health officials to help fight the Alzheimer's disease crisis. Well, Heather Snyder is the director of the Alzheimer's Association. She's taken time from the conference to talk with us about these exciting findings. Thank you so much, Dr. Snyder, for joining us. No, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Let me ask you something right off the bat, because this fascinates me. This, the, the study about veterans with cancer, is there really a link here? We don't really know what the link is, but in this very large study of over three and a half million people, we see specific types of cancer, as well as the treatment of cancer, radiation or chemotherapy, seem to uh, result in a reduced risk for Alzheimer's disease. It gives new light into what may be some of the mechanisms or the common mechanisms between the two diseases that we can further understand and further investigate. Okay, another one of the numbers we learned about was retirement age. What kind of impact could that have on your Alzheimer's risk? Well, one of the studies that's being presented here is actually looking at older age retirement at reducing risk for Alzheimer's disease. And it really adds to the body of evidence around mental activity. So staying mentally active uh, for reducing risk of Alzheimer's disease. And that really uh, goes along with some of the other information that we know around state being physically active. Uh, probably the strongest evidence is being physically active, but also staying mentally active. Okay, uh, ethnic and, and cultural backgrounds. Why would the risk be different for, for different backgrounds? Well, there's been a lot of theories about this, including uh, links to cardiovascular health. But what we're seeing here is that there may also be a link to socioeconomic factors that are playing a role. And really, we need studies to shed light on what exactly within different socioeconomic factors may be playing a role or increasing or decreasing somebody's risk for Alzheimer's disease. Well, I think a lot of us have seen these online Alzheimer's tests, but they're not necessarily something to be trusted. Is that right? Well, that's what research is showing. Of a review of 16 of these online tests, when scientists looked at uh, how they scored both in scientific validity as well as ethics, they scored quite poorly. Uh, if you're concerned about your, your changes in your memory or your thinking, the Alzheimer's Association would encourage you to speak to a healthcare professional. Is there some way that we can get involved in supporting Alzheimer's research? Absolutely. You can go to ALZ.org and uh, volunteer for a clinical trial through Alzheimer's Association Trial Match, or you can walk in the Walk to End Alzheimer's Disease, which take place all around the country in the fall. Again, you can access that information at ALZ.org. Dr. Snyder, thank you so much for taking time from the conference today. We look forward to learning a lot more from what you find out. Thank you. Have a good day.
Now, if you'd like to learn more about some of the research that's going on or you'd like to get involved with the Alzheimer's Association, easy to do. Go to our website, DelmarvaLife.com, and click on the Show tab. Well, still ahead on Delmarva Life, have you ever heard of a thaumatrope? It's a 19th century toy. Kids at one local museum are not only learning how to make one, but the history behind it. Your family can get involved too. Plus, a look at some other great family activities not too far from your backyard. We're also trying to figure out where Brian is on Delmarva. Brian, we are ready for our first clue. And I just so happen to have one, Jimmy. So here you go. Clue number one. Pay close attention. This area was established in 1933. Ponder that for a little bit. I'll have one more clue, then the big reveal. Stay with us. You're watching Delmarva Life. And I'm a pondering. But first, you ever find yourself straining just to hear what's going on around you? Dr. Oz helps us figure out if it's time for a trip to the ear doctor. How's your hearing these days? To find out, ask yourself these questions. Do others complain you watch TV with the volume turned up too high? Is it difficult to understand when someone talks to you from another room? Do you often ask others to repeat themselves? Do you have trouble understanding young children? If you answered yes to any of these questions, have your hearing checked by a doctor who can determine if the loss is caused by excessive wax or if it's noise related. 